Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. I don't think graphene is going to replace silver anytime soon. Some of you remember a video I posted earlier in the year talking about the technology, graphene, and its use uh, in potential for hyperconductivity as well as silver, the technologies of both of them. We discussed this a bit before about that. <clears throat> but this, I want to take a look at this, especially as several months have passed by and uh, we're seeing new things in the news about graphene and its uses and um, several different things in relation to some technologies as far as producing it. And uh, But first, before we go into this, let's kind of recap what graphene is. It's an allotrope according to Wikipedia here. It's a form of carbon consisting of a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal lattice. It's a semi-metal semi with a small overlap between the valence and the conduction bands, a zero band gap material. <clears throat> so essentially it's one atom thick for the most part and uh, it's 200 times stronger than steel developed in 2004 as rediscovered and the uh, and isolated and characterized in 2004 uh, in the University of Manchester United Kingdom so it's quite promising in in its strength and its uh, and its purpose and potential uses in so many different areas in in uh, in in industry and technology uh, medical sciences, many different applications, potential applications. And that's kind of where I want to touch on uh, in relation to this particular thing. Here we can see <clears throat> uh, air, bilayer, and, and graphene here in this photograph in transmitted light. One atom thick crystal. Very interesting indeed. But you know, there's there's been talk uh, in in the scientific community about a graphene and other carbon nanomaterials. So it's not just graphene, it's other carbon nanotubes and materials that can potentially replace scarce metals. And this particular graph shows some of that. Uh, antimony can be replaced and the plastics of uh, certain uh, things like laptops and the like. And uh, you can see even the screens can be replaced indium. And in electronics, you have a variety of different metals there, silver being one of them, that all of them can be replaced by graphene or carbon nanotubes. <clears throat> and so they, uh, this particular article talks about it, how scarce metals are found uh, in a ver variety of everyday objects. They're complicated to extract and difficult to recycle and so rare that several of them become conflict materials which can promote conflicts and oppression. Um, a study of Chalmers University of Technology now shows that there are potential technology-based uh, solutions that can replace many of the metals with carbon nanomaterials, such as graphene. <clears throat> and it talks about how they can be found in different areas of technology that we saw from the graph above. Uh, Richard Avidson and Bjorn Sanden, researchers in environmental systems analysis at Chalmers University of Technology, have now examined an alternative solution substituting carbon nanomaterials for the scarce metals. The substitutes, the best of which known as graphene, are strong materials with good conductivity like scarce metals. Now technology development has allowed us to make greater use of the common element carbon. Today there are many new carbon nanomaterials with similar properties to metals. It's a welcome new track and it's important to invest in both recycling and substitution of scarce metals from now on. The Chalmers researchers have studied the main applications of 14 different metals and by reviewing the patents and scientific literature have investigated the potential for replacing them by carbon nanomaterials. The results provide a unique overview of re research and technology development in the field. According to Avidson and and send in the summary shows that a shift away from the use of scarce metals to carbon nanomaterials is already taking place. There are potential technology-based solutions for replacing 13 out of the 14 metals by carbon nanomaterials uh, in their most common applications. The technology development is in, at different stages for different metals 
in applications, and in some cases, such as indium and gallium, results are very promising. And uh, that leads to <clears throat> where the debate of resource constraints, circular economy, uh, where this is offering hope, but they really don't know yet exactly how it's going to play out for some of the other metals, such as silver, as a conductor of electricity, especially for the small uh, profile that graphene covers. You know, it's, a, it's one atom thick. Um, the research findings were recently published in the Journal, journal of Cleaner Production. Avidson and Sindel stress that there are significant potential benefits from reducing the use of scarce metals, and they hope to be able to strengthen the case for more research and development in the field. And uh, But that's just it. There's a lot of research and development that need to occur before they can really be implemented, and production is a problem. <clears throat> the carbon nanomaterials consist solely of mainly carbon and are strong materials with a good conductivity. Several scarce metals have similar properties, and metals are found, for example, in cables, thin screens, flame retardants, uh, corrosion protection, and capacitors. Um, and uh, so they've investigated this and to see how it's going to play out. And there's another uh, technical journal here on ICSR, on the SMTA uh, org website. It's talking about the use of graphene to replace silver in electric electrically conductive adhesives, studying on electrical conductivity and mechanical properties. And um, this is an abstract that you have to sign up for to, to, um, to get in the details of. But it is quite fascinating. There's a lot going on out there, as well as fakes. You know, there is a there is fake graphene that's that's out there as well, and it's not even really become mass produced yet. It's only very limited in its in its uh, in its use. But that's just it. You know, because it involves carbon, there's going to be other materials, other uh, entities out there that will try to to create a um, a lackluster version of it, and uh, these graphene flakes, which may uh, prove to be inadequate finding the real thing and with these fakes that could possibly be coming out that won't promise you know it's a uh, and much harder to detect probably but you know we'll see this article t tells us there's a way to t uh, to tell the difference or whatever but when you have it embedded in other materials for instance there's shoes out there that supposedly have graphene in them it's a mixture of it with other materials and uh, and I think that's where everywhere all comes into play as to how this is going to pan out down the road. We have a long time, I feel, before this is really uh, comes into fruition, before it actually replaces conductors and electronics. And my guess is it'll probably be first implemented in the areas that I've talked about before with superconductivity. Uh, but nonetheless, as the technology evolves, well, it may, so will the use of silver. Uh, be more applicable and not only that more efficient they'll find ways to make silver as efficient as possible with using the least amount of it which means it can be implemented more frequently and more widespread and uh, so in other words as they develop this um, you know it may not be uh, cost it be cost prohibitive to implement uh, graphene uh, for quite a while even if they can't mass produce it um, with its strength uh, capabilities, whereas as time goes on, it'll be cheaper to implement silver, even if silver prices double, in my view. So we'll see how that all, all plays out. Uh, graphene is quite an interesting material. I think there's some promise there, but I think it's way off in the distance. And that, with that being said, I'll mention another technology, and that is 3D printing. And if a uh, you know, there's a new, new carbon, uh, liquid carbon uh, 3D printer that basically, essentially, I saw this the other day where it literally just creates it out of a liquid mass of epoxy using uh, air and uh, water and, and, uh, and liquid in this epoxy material. And it's a carbon process involved. And so it probably won't be long before you see the same type of application uh, possibly either utilized alongside with graphene that is uh, mixed in with the uh, epoxy or graphene itself 
may be uh, coated or sheeted on certain things. Um, and who knows, there may be ways to, uh, you know, with as much of a silver as a conductor, graphene can be used in concert with silver to protect it and to, to, pretend the, to prevent the heat from escaping. I mean, there's a multiple different factors and different ways that can be done. Obviously, it would be in conjunction with some insulating material, but the thing is, is providing strength and uh, maybe even supporting silver in some ways. Um, although there are some arguments that graphene itself is a better conductor, but there are, you know, that's, that's debatable. And it's debatable to see what the final form of graphene will be. There's a lot of testing that has to be done, and it takes a lot of time. You know, really, the, uh, the portion, what we know of graphene right now is literally only, you know, about 14 years old right now. So, uh, um, that's, uh, there's a lot of research and development that still has to be done. And, uh, but so silver is here, silver can be used, and there will be advances in silver technology as well. So post your thoughts below about this story. I think it's quite fascinating and interesting, and uh, maybe you have some knowledge on the subject. Feel free to share below. would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching, and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.